Hey, yo, so this is a clip, a teaser, of a recent Raw chat I had with Derek Hunter about the most recent Terry Gilliam film, The Man Who Killed Don Quixote. Yes, it's not Avengers Endgame, it's not Game of Thrones, we're talking Terry Gilliam instead. And it was a hell of a chat, actually. Uh, this is a Raw chat that is for $5 plus patrons on Patreon. So if you're interested in hearing more of this and more things like this in the future, patreon.com slash oldculture at the $5 level is where chats like this happen. So here's Derek Hunter and myself talking a bit about Terry Gilliam, his film The Man Who Killed Don Quixote, uh, the Orson Welles version of Don Quixote, and I don't know, I think that's it. Enjoy. Because a big part of the film is about this whole thing about inspiration, and about a person who's very passionate and idealistic and who inspires others. And, um, and, and in a lot of ways, I'm sure this is something that Terry Gilliam has run across throughout his career is, re- is meeting other people who, who, who adore him, idolize him and say he's a great filmmaker. And, you know, you've inspired me to do this, to do that. And, um, you know, um, and I'm sure probably the, the, you know, um, the, the, unfortunately, like the, say like the, the vast majority of people that he's inspired, it didn't think things didn't work out the way they wanted it to, you know? And, um, and that's one of the, the, the unfortunate realities of reality is that we, um, can pursue our passions and pursue our creativity, which is beautiful, but it doesn't go along with some, some heartache as well. And some just really, um, strong feelings of, 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 of soberness of, of reality, you know, uh, and the, and the practical side of reality. And, um, I'm, I'm wondering if the, you're, perhaps you're right. Maybe this, the Toby character is in a lot, is in a lot of ways, um, for your autobiographical of Terry Gilliam and sort of his dealing with how, you know, he, he, he hears all these people giving him all this adoration and talking about how great he is. And yet the reality is it's, it's so hard, hard for him, difficult for him to even get a movie to be made. And then when he makes a film, barely anybody sees it, you know? And um, I'm, I'm wondering if that kind of experience of, of just decade after decade of doing these passion projects that he does kind of um, has created a, a, a selfish, more, a, much, a more selfish personality in him than he would like, you know? Um, it's created a personality that perhaps, uh, uh, um, was not the kind of individual when he, when he was young, uh, when he was with Monty Python and doing his animation, you know, and when he was first a filmmaker and making time bandits and, uh, Brazil. So, you know, they're definitely, like you could see probably, um, now that you, you've got me thinking about it, that probably there is a lot of autobiographical element to, to that character and to what the film is about, you know? Yeah, and I don't know how many films he has left in him, especially with right. this one being so important to him over the course of the last two uh, two to three decades here. And But you can tell like he is really, really inspired by this Don Quixote story and the character itself. And I, I love the fact that like he was able to capture, I guess, like the original themes of, of that story. And full disclosure, I've never finished that book. I know what it's about. I know yeah. how it how it begins and it's ends. A big book. It's yeah, huge. and <laughs> I've I've tried to read it so many times I've just never gotten through it. So, uh, you know, I'm going to couch that what I'm about to say with that. But, you know, it just seems like the original character in the novel, you know, had this sort of uh he was too old school for the modern world that he was inhabiting even back then, you know, which was I think right, a, right. around the 16th or 17th century that that story was uh, took place and the thing is is that what i like about this film is that it's it's obviously set in modern day but that the theme from that original story that like it, it carries through and that there's not a lot has really changed in the world and the way that that we relate to it and i think that's sort of like the the genius of of this story that he's told on film here is that this sort of uh you know don quixote-esque um approach to the world it it kind of permeates throughout history you know there's always these sort of um there's always sort of like like ratios of of vice to virtue maybe 
and that the world is always this like sort of terrible, awful place. But there's so much potential to reverse that. You know, that's where the magic comes right. in, right? There's so much potential to make it, you know, beautiful and glorious with the right kind of, I guess, motivation or or uh, or inspiration. And I think that that was really like one of my big takeaways was was him capturing, you know, that the real true essence of that character and that story, and putting it, you know, in modern day. Which I, I don't know, obviously, if the film that he would have made 20 years ago would have been the same film that he made today. And I'm kind of glad he didn't make it to this point because I, I think this is, this was like, for me personally, the right time for me to see it and watch it and absorb it and experience it. Am I disappointed by it? Did I love it? Like, I, I don't really know yet. I, I've only seen it once. I, I right. probably need to watch it again, like any other film of his, to really, you know, form my. I guess true opinion of it because I was I was kind of up yeah, and down with it way, throughout. Yeah. yeah, but it just I don't know, it just seemed like it was a nice little wake up call through film for me, you know, that that there's this romantic way that like the Don Quixote character, whether it's in the the novel or the Jonathan Price character in this film, like there's this really romantic way that he sees the world through his imagination and I think like putting the Toby character in that as well. Like it, it wakes him up to like the sort of like moral or maybe immorality of his behavior from the last, you know, decade of his life. And it forces him to sort of confront himself and, you know, take responsibility for what he's done to himself and more importantly to other people. And I just thought that was, I thought how he captured that really, really well here. And I, I think my, my other main takeaway from the film was that, in these sorts of imaginative states or these sort of fantastical scenarios that we can conjure up, I think that it really allows us to see the truth in ourselves and in other people, especially that, that maybe we're blind to otherwise, or that they're blind to otherwise. And that's something that like, you know, I find myself in, in certain moments, like, you know how you sort of see your life as a movie. If you Definitely. get into that mindset, you do find yourself being, I think, like maybe more performative with your actions or more dramatic, and not in like a not in like a dramatic sort of like negative way. But you just see yourself sort of acting out things, and in sure, those moments, right, right. yeah, like in those moments, to me, is when I actually can can sort of separate from reality and see things for as they are, and not have my own you know, sort of blinders on or my own sort of colored glasses on that normally characterizes my day-to-day life and the people in it. It's like when I separate from that and I go into this sort of like performative state, which I guess is what you would, uh, you know, for this audience, like what you would maybe do with like magical ritual, right? You just sort of separate yourself and you go through the performance of it. Right. And it really allows you to to know yourself better and to characterize exactly. other people better. And I, I just thought, for some reason, like that, I pulled that out of that that film, like while I was watching it, and that's what impacted me the most. So, if you have any comment on that, please go ahead. Uh, no, what you, what you touched on is really is definitely something that is. I think that's what's captured people's imaginations with the with the story for so long. You know, is that and it's definitely something that which the the romantics, the German romantics of like the eighteen hundreds, that's what they really loved about the story. And the, the translators of like that time too really wanted to um, emphasize that character, that side of the story, which is basically that Don Quixote is this heroic figure for us all to encourage us to pursue that um, that performative, dramatic, um, sort of uh, uh, um, beautiful aspect of ourselves and realizing it in reality in sort of in in uh, in conflict with sort of the um, the ugliness of reality, the, the, um, the, the, the doldrums of reality, the, so the, the sort of like the, the, the bland aspect of our reality that we have to do the nine to fives, the, you know, all of that. And it definitely is, is, I think, um, a, it's a big, it, what's fascinating about the novel itself is that it's gone through, you know, um, over the, over, over periods of times, different interpretations, different ways of perceiving the story. And um, it just like Shakespeare's works, you know, like it, over time, it, it doesn't seem to to um, 
get old, it actually continues to pertain to people's lives as as time moves on. And um, but what's interesting about it is that like you you have some modern interpretations of the story, which um, is it, it definitely I think it appreciates uh, the the romantic side of of Don Quixote, but it also sort of um, shows that there is this other element to the story, which is being kind of critical of that. And um, because it, it definitely is Cervantes is taking a, a, a critique and it's, it's, it is satirical on this sort of over romanticization of, of that, of the past and uh, of, the, of, of knights and, and of being a knight errant. And, and a lot of it is embodied by the character of Sancho Panza. So as you're going through these different adventures, uh, you you have Don Quixote doing all kinds of wild, beautiful, noble, uh, crazy things, and Sancho Panza, who sort of is like a realist. So you have he kind of balances uh, Don Quixote's imagination with some sober realism, and it's interesting because that whole dynamic, you know, it plays out. And I, I say that probably, and I'm bringing this up because one of the things about the film, which it kind of and I do love the film. I love Terry Gilliam so much. Um, but I feel like one of the things that he's kind of missing from the story is that is this sort of balance between uh, this har- harmonic balance between the imagination, which is beautiful and glorious, but also uh, of reality. And the Sancho per- Panza character embodies that. Um, and he's he's a very humorous character, but he's always sort of checking Don Quixote on his wild flights of imagination, he's always sort of checking him with the grounding him in reality. And, um, and it's, and, and I mentioned to you earlier, but, uh, I, I recently saw last week, um, Orson Welles's version of, of Don Quixote and, um, which he never finished. He, 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 he was trying, he started making it, uh, I believe in the fifties or sixties for sure. And, um, just kept on like with a lot of his projects, just tried to scrap enough money and, and, and resources together to complete it. But he never did by the time he died in 1985, but someone else went ahead and, and just took the footage that he shot, the sound recordings that he did. He did a lot of the dubbing himself, uh, um, Orson Welles for the characters. Uh, and they released it, I think in 92. Um, and so I really, I've been meaning to see it for years and I just recently saw it last week. And of course, there's technical issues, and there's, you know, it's it's not a perfect film by any means, but um, you could see like the 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 possibility that it might have been a, a fantastic film, a great film, and and one of the things that I loved about it was that you see that Orson Welles kind of understood that dynamic of sort of like he is the humorous aspect of making fun of Don Quixote. He's a crazy character, but he's also a beautiful noble a person someone to to um to look up to in a lot of ways but also his character is balanced by the Sancho Panzo realist character and that and throughout the film you see that this kind of back and forth back and forth between them and this relationship that develops between them and um and and in, in Terry Gilliam's take on it you know it it um it 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 seems the realist aspect of it the Sancho Panza character is turned into a cynical, selfish kind of individual, not very sympathetic. I mean, you kind of like him because Adam Driver kind of makes him likable. But um, it, it, to me, Gilliam just, he, he, which is true to his, his, his whole title, you know, film, all his films are really uh, heavily emphasizing the romantic side, the imagination, the creative side, which is beautiful. And I love it, but um, he doesn't, to me, what I would have liked to have seen him do a little bit more of is balance it out with with that realist aspect, which is in the original story, in which I think Orson Welles captured really well. <laughs>